I'm declaring summer 2023 the summer of sun hats. Hi friends! If you're new here, my name is Liz, aka Knife Girl. Welcome, we're happy to have you. Uh, if you've been here before, then welcome back. So it is officially summer, it's June, it's Pride Month. The weather is definitely heating up. So for this video, I thought I would talk about everything that I bring with me uh, on a day trip. Now in this video, I'm gonna give you a comprehensive list of a lot of options for a lot of different contingencies based on where you're going, what you're doing, what the weather's like, what the location is like, etc. So I'm giving you a bigger comprehensive list so that then you can take some ideas and kind of pick and choose what you might need for your own adventure wherever you're going. So this video is not like everything that I bring with me all the time, but this is a lot of options and a lot of things that I consider and a lot of things I do bring with me when I go on day trips. And when I say day trips, I mean like festivals, fairs, theme parks, picnics, regular parks, beach days, hikes, any kind of any kind of adventure where you're going out into the world and you're doing something and you're going to be there all day probably doing a lot of walking or exploring or this and that and blah blah blah. So this is just a great big comprehensive list of a lot of things that I have and use and enjoy and I think are very helpful for day trips and yeah if you're interested in seeing what I pack when I go on a day trip then keep on watching. Okay so I have everything kind of listed out on my phone as a reference and I'm going to kind of, I think, try to approach things in categories to make it a little more streamlined and easy and everything. So I guess the first category that I was going to talk about is the backpack. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know I have a ton of reviews of different backpacks and things that I've tried. So I thought I would just show you a few backpacks that I have and that I would probably take going on a day trip. But really, any backpack that you have that you like that's sturdy and not falling apart will be fine. A lot of these are a little bit on the pricier side. I have reviews on all of these and I, you know, bought them because I wanted to try them. You don't need to buy, you know, something dedicated for this. I'm sure you have a backpack or know someone who has a backpack that you can borrow. So you don't need anything fancy. You just need something that's not, you know, falling apart. But if you were looking for a new backpack or, you know, just are interested in what I use, then I thought I would show you the ones that I would probably pick for a day trip. So I have three options. The first one is this Baboon to the Moon mini backpack. Now I have uh, an entire video dedicated to this, so I won't get into, you know, the nitty gritty. If you want to see more about that, you can watch that video on my channel. But I would pick this one just because it's sturdy. It's got a lot of capacity, but it's still pretty small and comfortable and it's cute. It's brightly colored. So I would either use this as an option or I would choose my my donut macaroon mini. Again, also have another video completely dedicated to this one about the ins and outs, but I would also use this as an option because of the capacity, the cuteness, blah, blah, blah. It's a very good option. I like it. It's sturdy. And then my third option that I would pick is the Herschel Nova, the small size, just because depending on what I'm bringing, I might need something a little bit larger. So I might bring this one, but Honestly, any of these three backpacks is a good option. And again, like I said, if you already have a backpack that you like and you use, that's not, you know, falling apart, doesn't have holes in it, the zipper's not broken, use that one. Honestly, a backpack is a backpack at the end of the day. And I thought I would also share if you are traveling and you need to pack 
maybe a, a foldable day pack or a packable day pack. You can use that too. This one, the brand is Sinatron. I got it from Amazon and it's like a very nice little packable backpack. So could be an option if you're traveling, if you want to throw a little foldable backpack into your larger suitcase or whatever. The world is your oyster in terms of backpacks. There's, you know, I'm not going to get too much into that. So the second category I was going to talk about is, this is going to be kind of a broad category, but basically clothing. And I'm not going to necessarily show you any specific examples because, you know, there's a multitude of styles and fashions and everything out there. I was mostly going to touch on this one point, which is for me, I always prioritize comfort, especially if I know I'm going to be somewhere all day, if I'm going to be walking around, if it's going to be hot or there's, you know, other weather. I just know I'm going to prioritize comfort. So basically there's just a number of things to consider. I guess the most important one being the weather. I would definitely, definitely, definitely check the weather for the location of your trip you know what i mean so you open your weather app and if it's like the iphone one like i use the weather is dedicated to your location basically where you are presently so if i'm at home it's going to show me the weather at my house but if i'm going someplace that's across town you want to make sure that you're checking for the weather in that specific location because temperatures can fluctuate based on geography weather patterns can be different it can be sunny at home and then rainy over there so just keep that in mind make sure that you're checking the weather in the location where you will be okay so you can usually look up just city and you can get pretty darn close so if it's hot you want to make sure you're dressing in light breathable clothing shorts or maybe a dress and if if you're gonna wear a dress if you have any kind of thigh rubbing like I do, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend you wear some kind of shorts underneath, whether it's like chub rub shorts or bike shorts. You can get bike shorts pretty much anywhere nowadays. They're very popular, very trendy. You can get any kind of inexpensive bike short and put it under your dress and believe me, it's gonna save you so much pain. <laughs> there is nothing worse than thigh chafing and you know various other varieties of chafing it sucks so like what I do is I just always prepare for you know I always try to dress as comfortably as I can while still looking cute I definitely do not subscribe to the idea that beauty is pain you will not catch me you know walking around in high heels I I want to be comfortable and that's you know that's just me I guess the last point in this category of clothing is taking into account weather changes. For example, if you're gonna be maybe, if you're gonna be on the beach and you're gonna be there into the night or you're gonna be pretty much anywhere into the night, it might start out warm or hot, but then get a little chilly at night. So me, pretty much no matter where I'm going, I always bring some kind of extra warm layer not like an extra warm layer, but an extra warm layer. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll bring, uh, if it's if it's really hot, maybe I'll just bring like a flannel shirt and that'll do me as a jacket. Or I have this, it's, sorry, it's black, so you can't really see it that well, but I have this windbreaker that I just got from Amazon. The company is Augusta Sportswear. I think this one's technically called like a coach's jacket or something, but it's literally just a windbreaker. I liked it though because it's got this extra lining, so it's a very, very light, compact extra layer. Like I can crumple this thing up pretty small and toss it in my backpack and it won't take up a ton of space, but it does give me a good amount of warmth if the weather turns cold or maybe you're outside, but then you're going to go somewhere inside and the AC is just blasting and it, you know, becomes chilly. Maybe you get wet or something from the theme park or the rain and you, you know, just need a little extra warmth. I always bring an extra warm layer, whether it's like just a sweater, an extra shirt or something. I don't want to be the, you know, caught unawares and just be freezing and not able to enjoy my time and my adventure. So 
something to consider. This this kind of jacket is what I'll usually bring with me or like I said, I'll just bring a flannel button up because that's pretty warm and you can kind of use it like a jacket. You can bring a windbreaker and have that double as a rain layer. I do have one I was gonna talk about but I have like a whole weather section and I was gonna include it in there so I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Just, you know, be prepared. Another thing that I'll do is if I'm going to be somewhere during the daytime and I know I'm going to transition to later at night, I'll just wear like a pair of tall socks as opposed to a pair of short socks because I'll just know that I can still breathe if I'm wearing shorts or something, but if I wear tall socks, it'll just give me like a little bit of extra warmth when the weather turns cold again, but that's, you know, that's nitpicking. Here, let's kind of transition from clothing to shoes and socks which is kind of clothing but I'm also just putting it in its own category because I think it's just kind of important to talk about that so as I said I'm the kind of person who prioritizes comfort over everything and believe me again nothing can ruin your trip or your adventure like dealing with pain in your feet whether it's blisters or just cramping in your feet or whatever kind of issues you can have from your shoes it it can ruin the vibe so quickly and just honestly make the day miserable like my example was in december i went to new york with my friend and her boyfriend at the time and we we only went for like two and a half days we were you know flew in one day spent the whole day and then flew out the next day so basically just two and a half days max and I was really dumb and decided to wear my new Doc Martens which I hadn't broken in yet and we were in New York we were doing a lot of walking and I had blisters and it was miserable and I I it definitely cast a huge pall on the trip like I still had a lot of fun but I just think like if I had just not been stupid and just worn some more comfortable shoes, I would have been so much happier. I would have been more adventurous. I would have been wanting to go more places, but I was just in so much pain, like unbelievable pain that I just, I didn't want to walk. I didn't want to do anything. And I just wanted, you know, to go back to the hotel and just sit and not hurt anymore <laughs> so I'm never gonna make that mistake again <laughs> and I wanted you to learn from my mistakes so please just wear comfortable shoes and just make sure you wear appropriate socks even if you're wearing regular tennis shoes you can still kind of get blisters sometimes if they're just rubbing you the wrong way so I always wear some kind of tallerish sock not anything crazy but just enough so that I have a full 100% barrier between my shoe and my foot so that I have maximum comfort possible. And then the other thing to consider is if there's weather happening or if you're going someplace a little bit more wild where water will be involved, do you need to wear waterproof shoes or boots? Or I also have this option. These are waterproof socks. I actually got them on Amazon. I will link them in the description below. I'll try to link most things that I show in the description below, but these I have, I used several times in, you know, a variety of weather situations. These just provide me with a, like a lot of extra peace of mind. Like I can wear my most comfortable tennis shoes, which aren't necessarily waterproof, but as long as I'm wearing my waterproof socks, I know that if I happen to step in a puddle or something, I'm not going to be dealing with uncomfortable wet feet all day. You know, my shoes may be wet, but my feet will be dry and I will be happy. So yeah, like I said, I've used these a bunch of times. They're very comfortable and they're not that expensive. I think $20 a pair, which obviously for a pair of socks is a little expensive, but they're, you know, they have a very special feature and they can be very handy. So I bought two pairs just to have. I've used them with boots and shoes and they're really comfortable and they work really well. Like I just stuck my hand in there and ran it under the faucet and my hand was completely dry. So this might be something to consider, especially like if you're hiking, maybe if you're going to a theme park where there's water or there's going to be rain and puddles and everything. A pair of waterproof socks kind of saves you from having to wear rain boots specifically. You can wear your more comfortable shoes but still you can know that your feet are protected from the rain so yeah shoes and socks very important as i said i do not ascribe to the whole 
theory that beauty is pain. I think you can be cute, but also comfortable. So wear your comfy shoes, friends. I don't know if this is really a category, maybe kind of like a transitional category, but I'll just say it's its own category, a hat. And this is something that I definitely bring anytime I go anywhere that I'm going to be outside more than like 30 minutes. So I'll either just have a regular baseball cap. This one is actually, the brand is Parapack and it's a really compact foldable baseball cap. And I wear this all the time. I take this everywhere, but it folds really, really small. It's nice for travel. It's nice to just chuck it in your bag. You can fold it really small. It's a really nice, you know, honestly pretty cute hat to keep the sun out of your eyes. I really like this one. I always bring a hat with me. So if I'm trying to keep it pretty low profile in terms of things that I'm bringing, I'll probably bring this one. But if I know I'm going to be out in the direct sun with not a lot of shade, you know, not indoors or anything, I will definitely bring a sun hat. And I have a few varieties that I like. These two are from Amazon. They're just your typical kind of sporty sun hat. I'll definitely link them both in the description below. These both have a ponytail hole, a, a spot where your ponytail can stick out, which if you have short hair, that may not be a factor for you. But if you, like me, have longer hair, I think it just makes it so much more comfortable. I do like to put my hair in like French braid kind of pigtail-like things and then wear this because it's still, I don't know, I just like that look. But if, if you're going to be in the heat, like it's going to be hot. I, I hate having my hair on my neck when it's hot. So, you know, it's so handy for me, someone who has a little bit longer hair, to have this ponytail hole option. And this one, this one has it too. This one, the, this part was just a little bit weirdly deep. So I kind of just did the tiniest little alteration where I sewed this little bit on and I don't know. I just like how it fits on my head a little better this way. I gave myself some options. I have your more kind of sporty utilitarian colors, but I also made sure to buy a kind of a cuter color just because I thought if I had a hat that was a little bit cuter, I would definitely be more likely to wear it in, you know, a kind of situation where you're dressing a little bit cuter. I wanted to make sure that I'm protected from the sun without sacrificing, you know, my aesthetic too much. I also found this hat just at Daiso. You can find sun hats everywhere. Um, this one didn't actually have the ribbon or the little strap. I just added that, just sewed some ribbon on just because you know, if it's windy, you don't want your hat to fly off. So I just wanted this little strap and I added the ribbon as an accent. But this is another just very cute, very functional option. All the hats that I have are very foldable. So if you're traveling, you can chuck it in your suitcase or you can, if you don't want to wear it 100% of the time, you can chuck it in your backpack. But I'm declaring summer 2023 the summer of sun hats because skin cancer sucks. We want to protect our beautiful faces from the sun. So also our neck and our ears and our shoulders. So sun hats, baby. It's the trend. Tell your friends. Everyone, we're going to wear sun hats this season, okay? <laughs> can I just tell a little anecdote one time? I don't remember where I was. Honestly, I don't even remember how long ago this was, but I'm very sensitive to the sun. I get burned like I can get a pretty bad sunburn in like 20 minutes. And one time I had, I guess I didn't put sunscreen on the back of my ears and they got burned so bad that they were just blistered, just looked like bacon. It was like very painful. They were like so blistered. They were oozing. I don't know. What is that? Like second degree burns? Just because I didn't put sunscreen on my ears because I didn't think about it. So sun hats solve that problem before it even starts. Everyone should wear a sun hat, okay? <laughs> and that kind of leads me to sun protection, which is no matter where I'm going, I always bring sunscreen with me. I like to just throw this little, it's an SPF 50, this SPF 50, the stick version, because it's very small. I throw it in my everyday bag and I take it with me every day, everywhere I go, because you never know if you're stuck out in the sun unexpectedly, you might need to apply SPF. But if I know that I'm going to be in the sun, what I will do is, my personal preference is I prefer the spray sunscreen. Please don't come in my comments and tell me that it's bad for me. I'm sure it probably is. I don't know, but it's just easier for me 
it it's faster and easier and I don't have to rub. I'm really bad like if I have to rub in the sunscreen if I miss a, a spot it's very obvious I definitely get a sunburn so I prefer the spray so I can just you know all over make sure I get a nice base coat <laughs> and I know that I'm protected whatever kind of sunscreen you prefer just make sure that you bring sunscreen with you and it's not enough to just apply some at the house before you leave because if you're gonna be out in the Sun I think it only lasts like max 90 minutes most likely it doesn't even last that long so you need to be reapplying sunscreen on the regular like you know every hour every two hours whatever you just need to make sure if you're out in the sun you're reapplying your sunscreen because again sunburn no joke so what i like to do is as i said i prefer the spray so i keep the big spray can type in my car whenever i'm going someplace when we park i'll just give myself a quick once over you know everywhere get everything nice and thoroughly and then i'll have this in my bag that i can use to touch up throughout the day like i'll you know hit my face where i where it may be exposed to the sun unless I'm wearing a hat if you use a sun hat you're good and I'll make sure I'll get all my arms get all my tattoos if you have tattoos you definitely want to protect them from the sun so they last longer and they're more beautiful get you know all my arms get the back of my neck my ears so I found this to be a very good kind of solution to make sure that I have sunscreen with me at all times while still not taking up too much room in my bag so that this is the one I like they have even smaller little sticks if you have a smaller bag and you you know you don't want to carry too much stuff Stuff. they have even smaller ones they also have small spray bottles and they have small little just the lotion bottles so it's so easy to find just a small compact sunscreen that you can throw in your bag and then you just have it and you know you have it and you're always protected and when you start to run out you just get another one because this one I think is feeling a little light I need to get more but that is one thing no matter where I go I always have sunscreen with me and I would very highly recommend that you bring some with you as well and kind of in the vein of sun protection I always make sure that I have my sunglasses with me with sunglasses if you wear contacts or you don't or you just don't wear glasses the world is your oyster as far as sunglasses you can wear whatever you want but if you are four-eyed like myself you are a lot more limited in your options so let me just show you some things that i have that i find work and then you can find something for yourself to work so your first option is just having a dedicated pair of prescription sunglasses i do have these these are a little bit of an older prescription but they are still prescription and i can still see pretty fine the only thing that I don't love about swapping glasses like this is, I guess, depending on the strength of your prescription, your glasses kind of warp the world around you and it can take a little while to kind of get used to that. So if you're, for me at least, if I'm like swapping glasses back and forth, I kind of get a little disoriented and I'm not a huge fan of it but it works so that's one option and a lot of people do use that option. I think my sister just has dedicated prescription sunglasses that she uses. You can also use the kind that just fit over your glasses. I have used those for a while. I think the main brand is like Sunshade or something and you can find cute ones. I have found cute ones on Amazon. Maybe I can show a picture here because I know the ones that I do have are presently in my car. You can find cute ones but kind of depending on what style frame you wear they don't fit so great sometimes. Especially I like to wear kind of big sized frames so those aren't the best option for me. What I found to be the best option is clip-on sunglasses. So I have three kinds of clip-ons that I really like. The first one, I think this one is my most versatile one. It's literally just clips on like it's, I don't know how to, it's just like a clip and it just clips right onto my glasses. I think these tend to be a bit more these are more versatile depending on like what frames I I'm wearing these work with kind of both I have like thick plastic frames and then I have these kind of more metal wire frames and these glasses work with both they're very nice they're mirrored and they flip up which 
I don't know if I utilize this feature so much just because I'm afraid of looking dorky, but they're really nice. They're polarized and I really like these. These are from Amazon. Basically all of these are from Amazon. And this is exactly the same thing, except it's just kind of a different style. It's uh, like a plastic frame instead of, you know, that metal, but it operates the same way, just clips on to my glasses. And these are nice and big, so they kind of, you know, cover up my whole frames. And you do have to deal with a little bit of this thing in the middle, but I think in these two kinds, the, th the middle clippy bit is kind of low profile enough that you don't super notice it that well. And then I have these kind, which I did find on Amazon, and these pretty much only work specifically with these exact glasses that I have. And you can, you know, if you have a similar style glasses, these might work for you, but these are the kind that have like a little spring and they have the little hooks. So these, they just hook on like that. And I don't have this clippy thing, but I do have that. I don't know. Basically, all of these are pretty cute and they work really well and they're very comfortable. And what's more is they don't take up a lot of room in my purse because they're all, you know, flat clip-on type things. So I found all of these to be really nice options. Oh, this is just a cute little like glasses case that I got on Amazon that I keep them in and I always keep just a little cleaning cloth thing in the case because, you know, glasses people, you always have to be cleaning your glasses. So this one also, it came with its own little hard case, which is pretty compact and that's pretty handy, honestly, if I'm being honest with you. But yeah, sunglasses, very important. Protect your eyeballs, okay? And then while we're still kind of in the sun-ish, the sun realm, I think I can also just talk about my next category, which I'm just calling weather. So weather kind of encompasses like what you wear, the jacket and everything. But I also thought I would just show you some things that I bring if I know there's going to be rain or, you know, whatever. Just things that... I think are important to have, especially because I've definitely been caught out in the rain before in like a pouring rain with nothing and just had to deal with it and it sucked. So I like to be prepared. So these are just some small things that I usually pack with me. Even if there's not really any chance of rain, I'll probably pack at least one of these with me just so I have it, just so I'm covered. Okay. The thing I'm most likely going to bring with me is this. It's just a little teeny tiny umbrella, but this one has the silver outer shell. So this one is actually intended to be used in the sun and the rain both. So I will most likely be bringing this one with me just because I can also use it as sun protection as well as rain protection. And it's the most compact option and it's very lightweight and small and it'll just you know, live in your bag and it won't take up a lot of space. You can throw this in your work bag or whatever. And it's very, very small. See, it's just about the size of my hand, you know, so very compact and I can use it as shade and as shelter in the rain. You don't necessarily need this exact thing. You can just, you know, if you have another umbrella that you like, just toss it in your bag and you can have it. However, if I'm going somewhere where I know it's going to it's going to be raining and what's more if I know it's going to be like raining a lot or if there's wind involved, I will most likely bring this, which is my poncho. I usually prefer a poncho in a situation where I know like without a doubt I'm going to be in the middle of bad weather. Umbrellas are not my friend in when it's windy. I just can't, you know, hold on to them. They're blowing all around and they turn inside out and it's not fun. So if if I know it's going to be kind of a stormy-ish situation, I'm definitely going to bring my poncho because that way I know I have 360 protection. If I have a backpack, I can throw it on underneath my poncho and I'll know that it's not going to get wet and all my junk is not going to get, you know, destroyed from the rain. Yeah, I just always feel a lot better having a poncho with me if I'm going to be somewhere in the rain. And 
Also, if you go to theme parks, family likes to ride water rides, but you don't like to get wet, I would recommend this because my, my boyfriend really likes water rides, but I do not like water rides. So my compromise is I will ride them with him as long as I have a poncho. So I guess here's the brand for the one I use. I think it's just a generic, you know, kind of thing on Amazon, but I really like this one in particular because it has a zipper. So you can kind of it's just a little bit cuter, you know what I mean? And it's a little bit easier to get on and off, especially when it's wet. You can just throw it on like a jacket, zip it up, and you're good. This one I've had for several years. I've used in, you know, a variety of weather situations, including just torrential downpour, winds, thunderstorms. I've used this exact one and it's worked great. It's the only issue is it's not super compact, but if you have a bigger backpack, I would bring it anyway, just because, you know, if you know that weather's going to happen, I would have this. I always bring this with me. If you're not absolutely sure that weather's going to happen, you can bring this, which is just a little foldable rain jacket. It can also be used as a, a windbreaker, so this can maybe be your extra warm layer. So I'll usually take this along if I'm not sure if weather's gonna happen, and I'll just have this as my extra, you know, jacket, but also in case it rains, I'll know I'll have this. But usually I'll prefer to just bring my umbrella because I really enjoy the sun protection as well, so. Those are my options for the rain, again, coupled with the waterproof socks and blah, blah, blah. As long as I have one or a couple of all of those things that I mentioned, I'm good to go. I'm happy. And it's pretty cliche to say, but you don't want it to rain on your parade. So I always like to be prepared. There's nothing kind of worse than just being soggy and miserable and sad when you're trying to enjoy your adventure. So... I always bring those things. So the next thing is, this is still kind of tangentially weather related. If I know that I'm going to be somewhere in the sun where it's hot, I'm going to bring my little fan with me. And I have talked about this in uh, another video. I did a video where I talked about like my lounge fly bags, but then I also showed what was in my park bag. And I'm pretty sure I talked about this little fan in that video. So I won't go into depth. It's just a folding fan. That's all it is. You can get, a, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Amazon, Walmart, Target, they're, you know, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes so but I will usually always bring this with me if I know I'm going to be somewhere where it's hot and here in California it can get pretty hot sometimes so if it's especially hot I will also couple this with a cooling rag like you can you can get those anywhere too I like the kind where you just dip them in water you shake them out and then you wear them and they cool you down so between that and this I, I know that I'm going to be as cool as I possibly can be while still being out in the hot sun. You know what I mean? You can also get the neck fans that you just wear around your neck. You can get the kind that you clip onto your waistband and they like kind of blow up into your shirt and kind of cool you down that way. There's a whole variety of fans that you can get. A lot of, you know, most of them are small and compact and lightweight and easy to bring with you. So if you know you're going to be out in in the heat this summer, it's not a bad idea to invest in these. They're really not expensive. I think this is probably like around 20 bucks. So you can find them for less or more, however much you want to spend. But it's always a good idea in the summer to bring this. Also, especially if you have kids, you're worried about your kids getting overheated, you know, make sure you have something for them. You can have that little spray bottle fan that really cools you down. That's really nice. It's really nice to have. So I always bring that with me if I know I'm going to be in the heat. Let's keep going. I have a few more left and then that'll be it. So this next item is going to be kind of contingent on your location and your activity. If you're going to be at, say, a park or a beach or kind of more of a relaxed outdoor area where there's, you know, some sitting and some hanging out, I will usually always bring some thing to sit on. I will usually try to bring something that I can sit on if I need to. So I kind of have a spectrum of things to show you. So let me just get into it. If, if I'm going to the beach or the park or something and I'm going to have, you know, more people with me, I'll probably bring this bigger 
beach blanket with me. It's very large, takes up a lot of space, so you can fit a good amount of people on it. However, if it's just going to be just me or maybe one other person, I have a lot of smaller options here. This one I got from Daiso. It's just a very compact picnic sheet. Uh, it really can only fit about two people, but I've used this a lot in the park with friends. It's really nice. You could use something like this at the beach too, but this one's waterproof. That other one was waterproof too, so if there's wet grass or something, this is a nice option. Or uh, one time in the park we were, I think we were trying to do summer weans, so we were carving watermelons into jack-o'-lanterns in the park with my friends and we use this as kind of like to catch the mess so that we weren't you know leaving a huge mess in the park some more compact options i have this is another pocket picnic blanket it's very small and compact it's waterproof this one actually also comes with some stakes that you can stake it down into the ground this one is literally just a piece of ripstop nylon that i ordered from Amazon. I hemmed it. It's waterproof, but I just use this as a pocket picnic blanket. I've talked about this in other videos, but this is just kind of a handy thing that I like to throw in my bag if I'm going out several, you know, a variety of places. I'll bring this if I'm going to the park so I can have something to sit on or if there's rain I can use this as kind of extra rain protection as a you know just in case it can be a beach blanket can be a park blanket can you can just sit on the concrete if you don't want to get your pants dirty these are just nice very compact options I also have this came in a four pack and I've talked about this in another video, but it's literally just a folding seat pad. It's just a little cushion. This one's pretty small. It does take up a little bit of space in your backpack, but if, say, it's it's nice if you're like sitting on concrete, it might be nice to have something that's a little more cushiony, or this is also good for like sitting on wet grass or a wet park bench or something. So handy to have and bring with you. Maybe like if you're going to like a sports event, like baseball game or whatever, and you don't want to sit on the hard seats, this is kind of just a little extra cushion for your booty. And then what I will usually bring with me is uh, my handkerchiefs and there's a million uses for handkerchiefs but I will usually bring one that I can just kind of like lay out on the ground so I don't get my booty dirty if I need to just like sit and take a breather or I can put it on you know if there's a questionable surface put this down sit on it I know I'm good I think I, I use these at the Ren Fair at the Ren the, the Ren Fair by my house they always have the hay bales to sit on and those are always like so pokey and itchy so I laid this down and then I was able to sit on the bale of hay without you know hurting my booty although just be careful because I actually I forgot to pick it up again and I left it so someone probably got a very cute handkerchief but these are you know Hankies are very handy, so if I'm if I'm trying to be bare bones and very light, you know, lightweight, I'll probably just bring a handkerchief. But again, if there's weather or water involved, I'll probably just bring this one because this one's very compact, but also waterproof and very handy. So this next one is kind of also optional depending on where you're going or what you're doing, but just something to consider. Utensils. I don't always bring utensils with me, but if I'm going to be going somewhere all day and if it's kind of like a fair or a festival type of thing, I'll probably bring some utensils with me just just in case and I've used them before like I brought them to Disneyland it came in handy because I think Disneyland is kind of trying to phase out like single-use plastics so if you're going to like a theme park or maybe like a state fair or something this would be pretty fa handy if you're going somewhere where you know like food is going to be plentiful and you're going to be trying things and eating things it's handy to have this one is my favorite, I think, of all the utensils that I have. I have kind of an extensive collection because I just really like portable utensil sets. So this one is my favorite. This one is, it includes a fork, a spoon, a knife, and two chopsticks. And they kind of, you know, fit together. So they come in this very little, very small compact box. And this is plastic. So if you're traveling, if you're going on a plane, plastic, you can bring a plastic butter knife and it won't get taken by TSA. These are metal, so you can't, 
you can't bring these on the plane. Well, you can bring the fork, the spoon, and the chopsticks, but you would probably have to take the knife out. I don't know exactly the rules. I think TSA allows you to have a butter knife as long as it's like not sharp, but this is metal, so I could see them trying to take this. If you're not traveling and you're just going someplace, you know, driving, you can bring this one too, and that way you can have actual real metal utensils with you. These are nice. It comes with a fork, a spoon, a knife, and chopsticks as well. This one got from Amazon. It came in a pack of three, and they all came with this, you know, handy little sleeve. These I use for work. I'll just throw them in my work bag because we have catering at work a lot and I don't want to use the single use plastic utensils that they provide at catering for, you know, environmental reasons. So I'll use this, keep it in my fanny pack and I'll use this to eat every time. But if I'm going somewhere to like an event, I'll bring probably this one and it has worked really well. And it's just kind of handy also, you know, if there's going to be a lot of street food you, you know that you'll have utensils no matter what. And in that vein, I also have this. It's just a little silicone straw. You can get these pretty much anywhere. You can get the folding metal ones. You can get the silicone ones. I kind of just prefer the silicone ones because I think they're easier to clean. The metal ones, for me, I've kind of noticed they can get some mildew on them after a while. And the kind of telescoping design is not so great for me, but this one works pretty well. It just folds up and it has this little case. This one also has this little like cleaner thing that comes in the case. So you can just like zoop, try to get the water out. I do make sure though that if I use these, I will, when I get home, I'll wash them more thoroughly. But if I'm out and about using them, I'll try to give them like a little rinse in a drinking fountain or something. This definitely comes in handy, especially like if you're going to theme parks. I know a lot of theme parks are trying to phase out plastics. So like Disneyland and Universal, I think are going to paper straws, which are fine, but I just like having my own and you know, it's better. So, so I think I have just three or four more things. This is, I told you this is going to be a comprehensive list. I'll try to go through these last ones fast. So the one thing I always have with me, no matter where I go, is a power bank, self-explanatory. You can get these anywhere. You can get a variety of like capacities, you know, but I always bring these with me no matter where I'm going. And I always also have at least my my phone cord to go with it because I don't want to be the person who has to like ask around and borrow a charger from someone like that's not my style i always come prepared with my own charger because you never know like you could break down at the side of the road and you know your car's dead so you can't charge your phone you need something you know to call for help i don't take changes with that i always bring a power bank with me this is something i always bring it's just a little ziploc bag and it just has a small variety of band-aids and it has an extra mask because you never know always bring it. This is my little cocktail of medicine. It's literally just um, a Tylenol bottle, but I've thrown some other things in there. I have ibuprofen, I have Tylenol, and I have Tums. And I've literally just tossed them all in the same bottle. And because you can, you can tell them apart, obviously. You can tell an ibuprofen from a Tylenol from a, well, I don't use Tums, I use Pepsid, but basically this is my first aid. If you need, you know, you have a headache or tummy troubles, it's all in here. It's very handy. And then usually I will always bring tissues too, but all the little things like this, the little sunscreen stick and my medicine, my power bank and my cords, I literally just keep them all in this little pouch here and I throw this in every bag that I use. You know what I mean? So if I'm just going no matter where I'm going, I take this bag with me. I just have kind of like a pre-packed kit and set it and forget it. It's done. I always have it with me. Okay. Easy. And then the last, the very last thing that I always bring with me and especially on a day trip is a water bottle. Now, the kind of water bottle that you use can depend on where you're going, what you're doing. If you're going someplace like on a hike or someplace outdoors where water's not readily available, you're probably going to want to bring a bigger bottle with you. If it's really hot, you might want to bring an insulated bottle. 
my go-to is this little 16 ounce Nalgene because it's small and I can toss it into pretty much any bag that I use but it's just nice like if I have to take my medicine or if I'm just feeling thirsty, I found that as, if I have water with me, I will drink and I will be less dehydrated. But if I don't have water with me, I found that I will probably not make the effort to go find something to drink. So I always bring it with me, especially also if you're going someplace like a theme park or something where bottled water is expensive. You don't want to pay $4 for water. Just bring this bottle and you can fill it up at any drinking fountain. If you are going someplace where water is going to be more readily available, like a place with a lot of drinking fountains and you don't want to bring a whole bottle with you, I can understand wanting to save the weight because they can be you know, a little heavy. So here's also another option. This is just a little silicone foldable cup. So, you know, if, if you don't want to carry a whole bottle around with you, but you know, there's going to be water readily available, you can just bring a little cup, you know, fill it up when you're thirsty, drink it, and then put it back in your bag. The nice thing about these silicone ones is they, they can also, uh, withstand some high temperatures. Although this one says up to 200 degrees Celsius. Well, that's pretty hot. So just, you know, take note of how warm water you're putting in. But I'm all that to say, you can sometimes use these for tea and coffee as well. Like I just went to a little gathering at a friend's house and they were serving tea and I decided to just use this so I didn't dirty any of their dishes. You can use this if you're going to like a party, you know, some there's beverages around and you don't want to use like a single use plastic cup bring your little cup i also have this little flat kind of flat pack water bottle that i use a lot in a lot of bags i don't know the exact ounces of this but it's just i want to say maybe this is like a 12 ounce bottle versus a 16 ounce so i can still hold a good amount of water in this but it's just kind of flat and a little more compact so a little easier to just toss in a smaller bag or fanny pack even but it's just handy I've always found to just have water with you regardless because dehydration is no joke if you're like me if I get dehydrated I get headaches I get this that and the I get start to get nauseous so I just don't play with that I'm always chronically dehydrated anyway but I just want to make sure I don't have any excuse for not drinking so if I do get thirsty I have the water with me so you know water bottle self-explanatory but I always bring that with me on a trip no matter what so all right, friends, that was a long list. I'm sure this is going to be a long video, but I hope you found some or all of this information helpful. I hope maybe I gave you some ideas for how to make your next day trip a little more comfortable, how to be a little better prepared for all the things that life throws at you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. I would love to build my community on YouTube. That's one of my goals this year. And stick around. I do a lot of other cool videos. I'm trying to do a little bit more vlogging. I do reviews on things like, as I mentioned, the backpacks and everything. And I give you kind of just tips and tricks that I found to be helpful in my life. So if you enjoyed everything, please consider subscribing and sticking around and checking out my other videos, okay? All right, friends, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great summer. Go out and have some adventures, okay? All right, bye friends.